Hey guys, so today we have quite a bit of a lineup starting with the A7S III and the Lumix S1H and the Nikon Z9 but this is not going to be a full review this is not going to be a full review of all three I'm not crazy guys, I am curious and one of the things I was curious about is how each camera performs in low light yes the a7s3 is by far one of the oldest one amongst all these three and the s1h itself was released not too far away from the s3 but yes the nikon z9 is the latest one here and this does come with the latest firmware update that allows it to shoot apple prores 8k resolution that being said i will be making a separate review for these two cameras the s1h and the nikon z9 and yeah subscribe if you haven't already till that video comes out just to mention that this won't be a one-to-one -one comparison video just mainly because of how each camera comes with different lenses and each sensor is its own characteristics has its own character to it so yes it won't be a one-to-one -one comparison and also the fact that the s1h comes with 35 millimeter f 1.8 so these two come with an f 2.8 so the settings that i have in the um, footage comparisons are all in f 2.8 and the only thing that i will be pushing in terms of its uh, sensor sensitivity is the iso so i will be pushing the isos as far as possible plainly because of how each camera has different native ISOs. The one thing that I am well versed with is the uh, Sony, mainly because I use a Sony camera as well. And also the fact that I got a chance to take this out on an event, um, the Nothing phone event. I'm not sure if you know the brand Nothing, but yes, uh, they invited me to a Nothing event and the footage examples you're seeing right now is shot with the A7S III. And the fact that the Lumix uh, video, uh, pl platform, the Lumix camera, the S1H, caught my eye mainly because about how I have had some experience with the GH6. So if you haven't watched that already, click the link above. And the Nikon being the latest with the latest firmware update. Yes, this is a sports photography camera and not exactly a video camera, but I have barely scratched the surface of the Nikon Z9 and I'm already impressed about what it can do plainly and how it just is an all-rounder. I think the best comparison to this will be the um, Canon R3. But yeah, let's get into the uh, footage comparisons because I don't want to push this video for too long. I don't want to extend it for too long. It can get very, very nerdy and very geeky talking about numbers and all the other stuff i myself might not be able to explain in technicality jargon so yes let's move on to that okay so here we are reviewing the footage of the nikon z9 the lumix s1h and also the sony a7s3 and i do want to mention that the i'm focusing on the middle part of the image just mainly because different lenses have different characters and sometimes the corner of the image just might be a bit warped and it's always best to take the sample that is right in the middle of the frame because that's your main middle focal point but yes anyways this is in standard color profiles i am not gonna be re um, making my remarks on each uh, log profiles nikon has n log on them but um that requires an external recorder, which I don't have with me. So I'm just mentioning that this is going to be in, um, in standard color profiles. To be fair, the bottom part of the image is still quite lit. There's still quite some um, light coming off from the bottom part of the uh, frame, but the buildings and the sky is where I'm usually looking at when it comes to a skyline type of footage on how low light is um, performing whether we see any noise at this point I don't necessarily think so because this is very this was at ISO yeah, this was at ISO 2500 and like I said just now I'm only gonna be pushing the ISO so at this point it's still in 2500 uh, ISO but I I have overexposed it by three stops 
and moving along I'm this is in four over uh, over four stops and here we are about five stops and just pause it right there there is the Sony 7S3 is showing a lot of noise and the Lumix S1H is performing very nicely to be honest like I wasn't expecting that I was expecting the Z9 to be doing better at this point five stops overexposed I would give it to the S1H not bad not bad okay we're moving on to a new image um, this is where I wanted to see whether the colors would be banding in a different way if it's um, overexposed but this was again at 2500 ISO but yeah there's three stops and now at four stops and now at five stops so yeah uh, at this point the A7S3 is starting to show a bit of warmth that I don't know where it's coming from to be honest I think the Nikon Z9 has the most the one that has the most natural tone to the environment that I was in there was some yellow lights on the on the left part of the frame but the middle part where the I love KL wording is um, that sign the red in the Nikon looks much more true to tone even five stops um, overexposed and here this is where it was um, a much more demanding test I'd say the, the, the fact that the only uh, light source that is available right now is on the corner uh, where there were street lights and I think I'm trying to focus more on the sign, the Kuala Lumpur sign. The Lumix, again, um, it's not, I would say it's not as clean as the Nikon, but the, still the A7S III is kind of struggling there, trying to maintain um, highlights because some parts just feels overexposed. I think the Nikon Z9 has the most dynamic range. The S1H, very close by, but somewhat underexposed. And this was at 12,800 um, ISO. So yes, I pushed all of these three cameras up to 12,800, which I was hoping for the A7S III to be performing the best because I know they don't necessarily say that it's natively 12,800, but usually it cleans up the most at that, um, at that range. So I was expecting the Sony to be performing the best at this point, but it still doesn't match the colors. And like, yeah, it's starting to get noisy, three stops uh, above and four stops. Again, the A7S III looks like it's over way too overexposed now. And five stops. Surprisingly, the S1H is doing much better than the Z9 at five stops um, above. So, yeah, that is quite surprising. So from just these three tests, I would say that the first image, I would say goes to the Lumix. I guess and the second part of this test is the Nikon I would say the Nikon so one Nikon, one goes to Nikon one goes to Lumix and this last footage example um, S1H I give it to the S1H five, five stops above exposure yeah, the Lumix S1H is surprisingly the winner for all these three tests. But this isn't just about what uh, I could capture in that specific image. I, it is a good uh, example if, if, if I were to be fair enough to each camera. Um, but I think the best way to see what um, a fully dark lit room like I only had the source of the table lamps available here in this uh, space that was the only thing that was litting me up in this footage example I'm showing you here so 
at the, the here is the Nikon Z9. The Nikon Z9 at 12,800, yeah, 12,800 ISO. The Nikon is not too bad. Lumix, Lumix, uh, this is when the colors just starts to get a bit warm. It looks a bit magenta, I would say magenta. It looks grayscale to some, to some extent. And surprisingly the most, so the one that surprised me the most is the A7S III. This is 12,800. This is totally usable footage. I would totally use this footage. Of course, I would light myself up more, but this is pretty clean at 12,800. And this is when um, I just pushed the ISO all the way to its fullest range. The full beans, which is 51,200 ISO for both the S1H and the A7S III. So again, for this example, the A7S III, it's, it, it looks so usable. I would totally use this footage. Yeah, this is where, this is where things drop off the most for uh, Panasonic cameras. Even with the GH6 that I, I got to test, it had very good improvements in low light. Don't get me wrong. But in terms of cranking your, your sensor sensitivity to like thousands of ISO, to up to 51,200 ISO. And the Nikon, surprisingly, it, yeah, it suffered the most. I think I would still prefer to use no, I'll take that back. The Nikon did better. Even though it's noisier, at least colors still looked more intact. This one looks, again, very grey-scaled. And yeah, my skin tone doesn't look my, like my skin tone anymore. Yeah, surprisingly. Okay, what have I learned from here? Well, that the fact that the A7S III is still... still has some credibility to what they claim for it to be. It's hard not to say no to that when it's in this amount of like light environment. It, I mean, it's very, very dark. To be, very, to be fair, it's very, very dark. There's barely any light. And it looks very clean. I think that's what it's um, best at doing when it's totally dark, but when there's lights available and when it's at night with all kinds of light sources the lumix i I'm, i would give it to the lumix in in some credibility but the nikon is not too far away but then again the nikon is a much more expensive camera and much bigger camera to be to be fair but for again for the footage example test um, the, the main three tests I, I did earlier. I think that one goes to the, the Lumix, but the last two where it's completely dark, Sony A7S III, wow. I wasn't expecting to say that. But yeah, that is my findings of this low light battle. Again, I, I just want to mention that these cameras are unique to the, themselves. Like the S1H, I would say that I would love to have that as my main A-cam on set. I would love to have that rigged up with all kinds of uh, accessories and just use that as my powerhouse camera, especially being able to um, record in cinema 4K and that still manages file sizes quite well compared to like RAW, how um, Nikon is going with. The A7S III, I think that would have been, would be my wisest choice since I am using Sony as well. But yeah, that was very fun. And thank you for watching if you are up to this point. And do stay tuned for the other two reviews, which is the Lumix S1H and the Nikon Z9. That will be a full review. So subscribe if you haven't already. And please leave a like to this video because really helps me out in providing you more content and providing you more reviews. So yeah, subscribe to tech360.tv. Check us out on our website as well. Bye-bye, guys.
I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.